Halloween is over and the winter solstice is approaching. It always arrives quicker than we think. A common theme for various celebrations is the tree. Whether it's a Christmas tree, a Yule tree, or even a Hanukkah bush, we see them everywhere. So in this video I'm going to make a sort of stylized tree consisting of five branches per layer laid out in a polar pattern. Creating those branches would be quite tedious using typical surfacing and extrusion techniques in the part workbench. So the curved shape workbench comes to the rescue. If you haven't installed that already, I urge you to install it now. Start with a sketch on the XZ plane. Create an arc in three points. Start out on the x-axis, come up to the y-axis, and curve inward towards the origin. Do the mirror image on the other side. It doesn't have to be precise, it can be constrained down later. Select the endpoints of the arcs on the x-axis and the origin and constrain symmetrical. Select the two arcs and create an offset. Set the offset to 1 mm. Select the two arcs we started with again and toggle to construction geometry. Close the sketch. This gives us a good base profile for a branch of the tree. Now create a sketch on the YZ plane. Looking carefully, you can see the first sketch in the profile on the Y axis. Bring in the line segments at the top and the bottom of the first sketch as external geometry. Those are actually arcs, but from this perspective they look like line segments. Create another arc in three points. Start from the topmost point of the previous sketch and attach it to the x-axis. Curve it inward slightly. We just want a gentle curve such that we might see in the outline of a tree branch. To complete the shape, drop in a line from the origin to the end point of the curve on the x-axis. Close the sketch. This gives us a sort of vertical rail for the curved shapes curved array tool. As you can see from looking at the top, we still need to constrain the array from the sides. Create a new sketch, this one on the XY plane. Bring in the endpoints from the other two sketches as external geometry. On each side, create an arc in three points attached to the endpoints of our two sketches. Again, curve them in just slightly. So the tree doesn't look crooked, constrain the arcs to be equal. We don't want the branches to come out into needle sharp points, so select the sketch fillet tool and both of the arcs. This gives us the rounded end that we want, but now we're falling well short of the arcs of the other sketches. We can fix that up. Select the arc and the external point and the point on object constraint. It did what we said, but not quite right. Zoom in on the top of the sketch. Select the center of the arc and the y axis and constrain it point on object. That's a lot closer, but now the arc is almost vanishingly small. Grab the center of the arc and pull it downward a little bit to open it out. Close the sketch. That looks a little funny, but it's actually what we want. The Curve Array tool will create copies of the profile scaled and distorted as needed to keep it on the rails. Go to the Curved Shape Workbench, select Sketch, Sketch 1, and Sketch 2, and Curved Array. We need more than four instances of the profile to get a clean result. Select the curved array and in the data pane set items to 8. That looks like enough to faithfully create the shape. Now set solid to true. That looks not quite right. Since the problem is with the starting profile, go to offset start and see what we can accomplish. It looks like one millimeter gives us a good result. It got us past the little geometric anomaly so that now we have a nice shape much like we wanted. Now open up the curved array and hide the sketches away. They're just creating visual clutter at this point. Back to the part workbench. 
Now that we have the basic shape, it's time to make a polar array of five of them. A common first approach to that is to just create the array. Count of five and set the radius to zero. Select the curved array, select the polar array, and populate polar array with copies. Overall, that's more or less what we were hoping for. But we have the obvious problem of other instances sticking out from the side. Another issue is that the underside, in addition to being far from optimal, would not permit any kind of wiring of lights from the center. In this case, the simple strategy is not going to be sufficient. Undo that step. What we have to do is trim our shape to avoid the overlap. So we'll build a tool for trimming. Create a new sketch on the XY plane. And using the polyline tool, create a triangle with one of the vertices on the origin. Switch on view cross section and dimension the angle at the lower vertex to 360 divided by 5. Let FreeCAD do the math. Set a symmetrical constraint on the other two vertices of the triangle so that we'll make an even cut in our part. Turn off cross-section view and expand the triangle until it completely covers the tip of the part. Inside the triangle represents that part we want to keep. Close the sketch and extrude the triangle. No need to think too hard about it here. We just need it to completely cover the part of the shape we want to keep. Set it to 100 millimeters and symmetric. Select the array shape, select the extrusion, and intersect. That looks pretty good, so select the common, select the polar array, and populate polar array with copies. Everything mates up cleanly and nothing sticking out where it shouldn't. The underside is free from obstruction. Because of the 1mm offset in the part, there is a small hole at the peak over the origin. But that was going to be cut out anyway to make room for a trunk. Otherwise it could be filled with a small extrusion. So we have a good first layer for our Christmas tree. Now it's time to create a stack of them. Fortunately we don't have to go through all of that again. Select the populated polar array and create a draft clone. Select the clone and in the data pane come down to scale and set 0.8 for X, Y, and Z scaling. In the model tree select the clone, right click and select transform. Just raise the clone up a little bit. The top of the first layer should remain inside the second layer just a little bit giving the impression of branches. There's not really a precise number for this. It's just a matter of personal aesthetics. It can always be adjusted later. When you get it where you want it, just click OK on the Transform dialog. Now for the next layer. Once again, clone the first layer. It needs to be scaled down from the layer below in the same proportion. There is a little infelicity in FreeCAD here. I would like for it to do the math, but it doesn't seem to work in the scale fields of a clone. So select it and in the data pane, scale in X, Y, and Z, set to 0 0.64. You can also set that for X and use a formula to set Y and Z and set them to be the same as X. Again, right click on the layer and transform and raise it up to like before. Now one more layer for the top. Same procedure, and the scale is 0 0.8 to the third power, or 0 0.512. Position it just like the others. That's got it stacked up, and it's an interesting looking design, but trees don't work like that. The branches spiral upward along the trunk. So we need to apply a rotation to each of these layers. Go to the second tier and in placement.angle enter 360 divided by 5 and then divide by 4. 360 divided by 5 is the total rotation from one branch to the next. Since the shapes are periodic in rotation, there would be no point in rotating more than that. There are four layers and within that limited range we want none of the branches to be at the same angle. So take that number and divide it by 4 to get the first rotation. 
So FreeCAD does the math for us and comes up with 18 degrees. Select the next layer. In the data pane, in placement.angle, set a formula. Entry completion will be our friend. Here I start typing populate and it provides a convenient list so I can select the first clone. Placement.rotation.angle times 2. OK that formula and move on to the next tier. Formula entry just like before, but this time multiply by 3 to give us the third position within the range. As you can see, this gives us a much more natural look. We have a good start, but also have parts just floating in space. We need a trunk to tie it all together, but it's going to require some thinking and design. If the tree is to be actually printable, it'll have to be in parts that are assembled after. That assembly will require some design consideration. I'll cover all of that in part 2 of this video. Be sure to subscribe and request notifications so you don't miss it. Talk to you next time. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.